P2B in a question and answer session on national issues wondered why the government is able to track his location anytime, anywhere he is, but they cannot track criminals, terrorists, and kidnappers who communicate with their victims using a phone. He also talked about nepotism by people in power, especially Tinubu, who is doing exactly what Buhari did, appointing people from a particular region of the country. He even made his son-in-law a director. P2B also talked about the significance of opposition win in Senegal and what he expects to happen in Nigeria in the near future. It's explosive and epic as usual. Let's start with his views on security challenges facing Nigeria. Well, you know, I've talked about insecurity several, and I continue to say we can deal with it if we are determined to deal with it. You know, we cannot allow non-state actors to take over the state. We either confront them head on. If we're at war, we know we're at war with them. If we can find partners, those who can even help us to solve it, that's why we're a country. Unfortunately, billions have been expended by government in terms of security votes of all forms and security budgets without achieving much. And then people have paid billions of ransoms without achieving much. So if you put all this together, you know that there must be something we're not doing well and needs to be tackled head on. If we are tackling head on, we will do a lot of work towards solving it. There's no way at this modern time, when I know the government authorities know where I, P2B, is at all time, because I've been told that, because I have a phone, that's what I was told, that the same system can see somebody come with the buses and carry 200 and something kids. These are not, these are not something you put in your pocket. These are not taking two people, 200 and something, carry them in buses, move them several kilometers away without anybody stopping them. But yet, if a normal Nigerian is traveling, you see checks all over the place. These people are not moving, moved in the bush. You can even see some where they move them within two days. They have special uniforms and, and shoes to match them. And they are phoning and asking for ransom and no tracking system at this time and age. Something is happening and nobody knows. Same thing I keep saying about issue of oil theft. These are not things you put in your pocket. So this kidnapping, this organized criminality, needs to be dismantled the same way we're talking about dismantling the criminality in Nigeria as a whole. It's not happening anywhere. Even in West African sub-region, not in Africa, it's only in Nigeria. And it cannot be stopped. Something is definitely not adding up. And we need to deal with it. And that is where I'm concerned that we started this journey preaching for a new Nigeria where things can be done differently. Now, let's see P2B's take on Tinubu's personalization of governance as a family affair. The other time he traveled with his sons, he placed them in the first order of protocol before federal ministers when they do not have any role to play in government according to the Nigerian constitution. We are not in a constitutional monarchy. Tinubu is not a king. Let's take a listen. Well, so now you know, if you follow my politics, I hardly discuss people. Hardly. Go and check throughout the campaign. You see where even some other political uh, presidential candidates, I don't want to call name, took it that their job is to call me name every day. They are not even campaigning. All do is calling me name. I never one day mentioned their name. I don't call names. You can see where somebody calls my name. That's the only thing it does on Twitter. In fact, there are none too. If I tweet that, oh, my wife did not wake up, it's late, late today, they will reply me. Their job is just me. I don't. Because I don't believe in it. 
But I can tell you, Saddam, all you mentioned is wrong. It is part of what we need to change today. Because we can't go on with such things. It shouldn't be. This is a country, you know. It is not a family business. And I must be treated with respect and dignity requires. That's where I see it. An appointment should be done based on competence, based on capacity and everything. And shouldn't be seen to reflect things you mentioned. I can tell anybody, and I keep saying it, I challenge anybody to go where I stand, and you won't see such. However, that is the component of what we're going to do in the new Nigeria. B2B was just being diplomatic. It is because our system is broken. That's why many politicians will do anything to win an election and start enjoying the trappings of office with their family members and associates. People are more attracted to the position and the benefits rather than serving the people. Politics is supposed to be for accomplished people, not hustlers. People who have conquered greed that are ready to serve the people. Such people will always make sure there is no conflict of interest. They must make sure they observe federal character. Under Buhari, federal character was thrown away. People that dared to question him were told that he was appointing competent people that can do the job, as if competence only has one ethnicity. In the end, Nigerians have seen that it wasn't because of competence, rather it was nepotism. Tinubu is doing exactly the same thing and since the executive branch has been doing it, the judiciary has taken it to another level. Chief Justice Ariwala appointed his son and daughter as federal high court judges. He also appointed his younger brother as the auditor of the National Judicial Council. His nephew was also promoted to the appeal court. Many of his relatives hold top positions in the judiciary branch. So it's a broken system. There are many honorable ladies and gentlemen in the National Judicial Council. They shouldn't allow one man to bring so much ridicule to the judiciary just because he's the Chief Justice of the Federation. Anyway, let's end with Peter B's take on the election win in Senegal by 44-year-old Faye. It's very simple thing. It showed the power of the people. The people must resist. The people are the ones suffering. Those who manipulated him and who are still manipulating the Nigerian situation today are not the ones suffering. When we say that 185 million Nigerians don't have access to pipe bomb water, the politicians don't belong to that 185 million. And these politicians are talking is not up to 5 million. If you say today Nigeria is 200 million, no, we are more than 200 million. The total number of politicians, all the people who are causing this problem, should be about 5 million. So you're talking about 0.25%. You know, 0.025% of the population. It's not even up to 5% of the population. So, how can 10 million, call even 10 million, 5% of the population be holding the rest to ransom? Even the rest are not part of the criminality. They can dismantle it. That's what happened in Senegal. The people say no. It is not Sonko or the elected president that said no. It is the people. Because it's the people that are suffering. Today, Nigerians are borrowing money to eat. This I'm talking about those who have jobs. They are borrowing money to add to their pay pocket to be able to eat. Not to do anything, just to feed themselves. So the cost of bread, nobody buys it cheaper. The rich can buy it, the poor can't. Fuel, power. You said there's no access to power. The rich have generators. Some have two. The poor is suffering. So it is time for Nigerians to be able to say no to this criminality. And I'm sure that will happen very soon.